It's time to find out the truth behind what's going on inside of these Doc Martin boots. People deserve to know. So I did that video where I compared the top four Doc Martin boots, kind of compared the leather behind them and what was really going on with leather quality and the finish on them. And that video did really well. And in the comments section, I got lit up because I got a few things wrong and there was much debate as to what is really going on inside of these. So because that video is doing well and I have a very strong sense of curiosity to see how wrong I really was. I'm gonna cut one of these in half and answer the main questions that were kind of posed in the comment section of the previous video. One being, does it have a shank? Two being, is it Goodyear welted? And three being, is the sole, if it's really actually bonded to it or if it's just a kind of a fancier way of gluing. And this is this is the this is just a regular 1460 pair of Doc Martin boots. This is the type that is made in Thailand. I wore these around for a couple weeks just to kind of get a feel for them and see what they're really like. And I also have these pair which are the made in England pair, the the vintage. I wanted to keep the Horween ones from last video, but they were too small and they're they they don't have any 11s, so I stayed with the vintage. This is a lot stiffer leather, so in the future I'm gonna do a video on how to break these in, because nobody does it the same way I learned when I was a firefighter, a wildland firefighter. So I'm gonna do a video on that, but let's get to it and let's cut a basically brand new pair of Doc Martens in half. Here we go. Okay, I've got it cut in half and haven't looked at it yet. So here we go. Whoa, there's a lot more foam in there than I would have expected. I thought for sure there'd be like some cork in there. There is 100% no shank in here, which isn't really a surprise because if you look at the way they bend up like this. So that wasn't much of a surprise, but I thought for sure that there'd be some like, maybe some like a hard, like maybe flexible plastic piece in there or something. That's really surprising. Okay, so they're def the sole is definitely not glued. Even the foam bits aren't really glued together. There's a little bit, there's like a tiny bit of glue, but not really much of anything. And it's actually kind of globbed on there. So that's kind of a bummer. Let's take out the foam. And so we can see kind of a little closer into what actually is going on. Okay, so this piece just popped right out. Looks like there's a little teeny dot of glue holding it on there. And then the bottom part of the sole, the toe, toe box part of the sole. This part actually does have a little bit of glue on it. You can see as I, I'm pulling this out. Got a little bit of glue. Okay, this is, this is where it gets a little interesting because now we're getting to see if it's really welted. And you can see that it definitely is welted in there. These yellow stitches on the outside go straight through and into there. But I think what we do next is tear apart the Goodyear welt. I 
after a lot of struggle, I got the sole off. And it definitely is Goodyear welted because it was a huge pain to get off. One thing I did notice is this, uh, it's definitely not melted on there super well, the, the welt. There's a lot of gap, um, especially around the hill, hill area. Just removing the welt pulled it off quite a bit. And you can see where it's burnt, but man, it is thin at that heel area. Like we're talking like 16th of an inch is all that's holding it together. So now we're gonna see if I can actually get this to come apart and how much force it takes. So I did have to pull fairly hard to get it to come apart, but once it came apart, the whole thing just came undone like a Ziploc bag, except for a few spots here and there. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Granted, I wore them for two weeks, but still, it's such a bummer. And I ruined any shot of me ever getting sponsored by Doc Martin. So let's go over the, the three things. So does it have a shank? Clearly no shank whatsoever. There's actually no structural piece at all. The sole has no structure in it at all. So no shank. Next would be, is it Goodyear welted? It is definitely Goodyear welted. You've got this high density foam stuff that it's welted to. It's not, it's not welted in the same way that other boots are where the stitch goes through the sole. And that brings us to the next point. How strong is this melted PVC sole? It's not that strong. I was hoping there would be like a centimeter of fused PVC to the welt and that it would be a true like joint between the two where it was melted enough that it, it wasn't weaker there, but clearly it is. They basically build their boots like tennis shoes and to be honest, most people wear Doc Martens like tennis shoes. So is it the worst thing in the world? No, <clears throat> their budget shoes or their budget boots you know, $120 sounds a lot, sounds like it's a lot, but it's really not for a pair of boots. You know, really high quality boots start at about 250 and go up to 500. Most firefighting boots, you know, they're 500 plus. If you get some whites or some nicks, they're really expensive. And that's where you're gonna see the really nice construction techniques. Um, not in a $120 pair of <clears throat> Doc Martens that's made in, in uh, Thailand. It's not the made in um, England boots. I'm really interested to see how this how this one's constructed. So maybe if this video does well, maybe I'll rip apart this boot. I don't know if I can bring myself to do it, but we'll see. I don't know, we'll see how this video does. So if you do want me to rip apart a $250 pair of boots, do me a huge favor and subscribe and like and all the other stuff because that's the only way I'll be able to afford to tear apart a $250 pair of boot. So that's the truth behind the cheap Doc Martin boots. Hopefully this helped. See ya.